In the last video, we started to motivate the need for a degenerate perturbation theory by looking back at the first order correction to the state derived from non-degenerate perturbation theory, uh, in which case the denominator of uh, the first order correction will blow up in the case of degenerate energy levels. In this video, we're going to start setting up the problem of degenerate perturbation theory by introducing some notation uh, that we'll use in developing uh, new expressions for the first order correction to the energy. So for generality, we're going to consider a Hamiltonian, a model Hamiltonian H0 with an energy spectrum uh, E1, E2, and so on. Uh, these can be less than or equal to one another in general, and these are considered ordered up until some uh, energy level n, after which you have capital N eigenstates that have the same energy before finally uh, getting to a state that has a different energy. And we'll denote this common energy of these capital N eigenstates by E uh, lowercase n. We're also going to uh, denote the eigenstates, the degenerate eigenstates by uh, two indices. So n zero is the unperturbed nth uh, energy level. And uh, this first one here will associate to it a label one. The second one, uh, at EN plus one, we're going to associate it a label N02, which is the second degenerate energy level, and so on, up until the capital Nth degenerate energy level. Okay, so these are the degenerate eigenstates. The other important property of these states uh, so the set of eigenstates and not k, where k goes from one to all the way to capital N. These form an orthonormal basis set for a vector space that we're going to denote by this curly H, D, D for degenerate, and a capital N, because there is capital N uh, states. And this we're going to sometimes refer to as the degenerate subspace. So because they form an orthonormal basis, they have to satisfy the following conditions. So for any two states, n not L and n not K, these satisfy the usual orthonormality relationship. Uh, denoted by uh, by this, their inner product gives you this Kronecker delta LK. In addition, because these states were eigenstates of the original Hamiltonian, they also satisfy the time-independent Schrodinger equation, which is this eigenvalue equation that when you act on with the Hamiltonian on one of these states, uh, you get uh, you get back this state just scaled by its energy. And because all k states have the same energy, we're just going to denote it as n k, yeah, e n, for now. 
So this is the time independent Schrodinger equation. And what we wanna do is look at what happens to these states, these degenerate states, when we start turning on a perturbation. which we're again going to denote by delta h hat, uh, delta h hat being the operator associated with the real perturbation. And we're going to again assume that when we turn on the perturbation, we can ultimately express the new state as a power series expansion in this parameter lambda that we've been using to to tune the perturbation. So this would be our original state, our first order correction, our second order correction, and so on for state, uh, for the degenerate state K. Likewise, the energy levels, uh, which now have two indices, E uh, and K. The K denoting the fact that each degenerate state can get a different energy correction. So initially, all K states have the same energy to first order. Each state might pick up a different correction. Second order they might again pick up a different connection. So the state K might have a different correction than the state K plus one or K plus two and so on. And we're going to focus in the case where uh, the K degenerate state gets a different energy correction. Okay, so each, each one of the degenerate states will get a different correction. So what that means is the k state, the first order correction to the k state will be different than the first order correction to the l state for all k that are different than l. And here k can go from one to all the way to n, uh, capital N. And again, we're going to limit ourselves only to the first order energy correction. We're not even going to calculate the first order correction to the state because that requires going to uh, second order contributions, which is what makes degenerate perturbation theory much more difficult than the non-degenerate case. And the idea then is that this new uh, state, this new corrected state, will satisfy the Schrodinger equation. So that means that uh, with our new Hamiltonian which has the original contributions plus a perturbative term that we can tune with this lambda. Uh, this new corrected state satisfies, again, the time independent Schrodinger equation. We can expand this to different orders. So that idea remains the same. So if we expand and again collect terms, so the zeroth order term gives us this equation to be satisfied. 
And this is just our original time independent Schrodinger equation for the unperturbed state. So this is already satisfied by assumption. The first order, uh, first order terms of this equation up here give you the following equation. And remember these are, you can think of these equations as the coefficients of each one of, uh, of each order in lambda. Over here, we have the first order correction to the state. And this has to equal to the first order correction to the k to generate energy level, the perturbation Hamiltonian and our original unperturbed state. And this keeps going for all orders of lambda. But again, we're only going to focus on the first order energy corrections. So this is as far as we'll need to go. And the idea behind the general perturbation theory is that we need to find the right linear combination of our unperturbed states to be able to capture how these states are going to change as the perturbation is turned on and off. So the right linear combination of our original unperturbed states. Uh, capture how they change as uh, lambda is increased. So we should be able to turn on the perturbation by increasing lambda. And if we turn it back off, we should arrive at as a set of eigenstates that are a linear combination of our original unperturbed states. And the reason for that, uh, and mathematically speaking, is because when uh, a matrix has degenerate eigenvalues. The eigenvectors that we find are not unique. Any linear combination of these eigenvectors are themselves eigenvectors of that matrix. Okay, so in, for degenerate perturbation theory, our original unperturbed states might be the wrong choice of basis in which to express the perturbation Hamiltonian. And the, the goal then is to find the right linear combination of these states so that our perturbation Hamiltonian can be diagonalized. So the approach we're going to take is we're going to consider a generic linear combination of these uh, states. And that's going to replace our original unperturbed states. And uh, we'll get that to uh, what we'll do then is solve for the coefficients of that linear combination to be able to satisfy uh, this first order equation. And that's what we'll do uh, in the next video.